Hi, I'm Ryan Crouch. I'm a footwear designer at Hoka, and today I'm gonna to take you through a design rundown of the Mach 4. The Mach series was originally established as an up-tempo trainer. While we wanted to maintain the spirit of it being a trainer, we also wanted to take it to the next level. So a lot of times it feels like we've completely rebuilt the shoe from the ground up. The design process for the Mach took about two years, and a lot went into this really complex design process. So we were given the brief, first of all, and we knew that we wanted an up-tempo trainer that was light, that was fast, and really delivered that Hoka experience. Then we went into an intense phase of sketching and prototyping. Sketching typically takes a couple of months just to get to the final concept. Through sketching, we talked about how we wanted it to be streamlined, to be fast and nimble, and then we moved into prototyping. Prototyping, we work with our factory partners to create 3D mock-ups that will inform us on how the shoe might perform and how it will be manufactured. So at the early stages of the design process, we were looking at the predecessors and we really wanted to maintain that spirit of lightness, fastness, and being an up-tempo shoe. What we also really wanted to do was to take that experience to the next level. During the design process, we were looking at some of our newer trainers in the market at the time, like the Rincon, for instance, where we were offering new experiences that were super light, super fast, and super hoka. So when we first got this sample, it was definitely heavier than we wanted it to be. There were a lot of elements going on in the upper. The midsole was not up to par exactly with what the team had projected. So we really had to get back to the drawing board uh, and put our heads together to sort of get after what the original intent had been. So we started over in, in essence, and that I think was a really difficult part of the process, but it was a good learning curve for me as a young designer to really find it in, in the team and in our resources to come out with the best product as possible. So we started to move towards uh, lighter construction, an engineered breathable mesh upper, incorporating the extended heel tab in the back, all these things really go into the experience of how the shoe feels from the moment you put it on to the last mile that you're taking. So we definitely scrutinize the details down to a T and we're always refining and always looking for better solutions. I think in a lot of ways this midsole feels completely different to the predecessor, but it's also taking some cues from the Carbon X2. So similar to the Carbon X2, we have a stacked foam composition, but what you'll notice is that the proportions are a little bit different. Underfoot, there's a newer foam that we're using at Hoka, and it provides a good amount of cushion, but you're not sinking into it so much. It really provides that snap and an up-tempo feel. And then we use our rubberized foam on the bottom layer. And so what that does is it improves the traction on the ground contact and provides protection from wear and tear, but it also is a lot lighter than traditional rubbers, so it gives you that light sensation. Within the geometry, we really scrutinized how much we were coring out of those flex zones so that there's plenty of give when you're going through the shoe and also weight saving in targeted areas. Similarly, down in the heel area, we have a really big aggressive core here as you're not landing in that zone, again, making it as efficient as possible. And then also from the side profile, having sort of these support struts coming up in the back part of the shoe on the lateral and the medial really provides structure where you need it in the heel area, but not so much that you're rolling on top of it. So for the upper design, it was really a back to basics approach. You have this nice and breathable engineered mesh for the body with some diamond patterns throughout to provide those breathable zones. You also have a full areopreen tongue with a gusset. Again, there's holes in the mid layer of that foam within the tongue, so providing breathability throughout. We also incorporated the pull notch rather than having a traditional heel tab. You'll see that incorporated in a lot of our Hoka products in the line. Also for support, there's this heel film piece on the back. And what's also nice about it is that it is made with a film that reacts to light. So there's a flash capability to that as well. It's also important to think about other shoes within the line as we're designing. So when I was designing the mock, I was actually designing side by side with Odile on the Carbon X2 and the Rocket X. We really wanted them to be a family and to provide a range of experiences within the flag category. So you'll notice that though it doesn't have a carbon plate, it is still fairly snappy, and there's some elements that are shared between the Mach and the Carbon X2. That's really intentional from our side. We collaborated a lot together to get it to this point. I'm super pumped with how this project came out. I think a lot of thought 
like down to the details went into this project. And I'm feeling really grateful that I was able to work along some really talented designers in the process. I think that people are gonna be really excited about this shoe because it's something completely new for the Mach series. It's lighter, it's faster, it's more responsive, and it's for a wide range of runners. So runners like me, all the way to the elites, can get something out of this for their training.